Hello and welcome to the coronavirus update for the 30th of April 2020 where there are over 3 million cases of the coronavirus in the world and just under a quarter of a million people have died from this. About a million people have the coronavirus in America, which sounds quite a lot until you realize there are 300 million people in America. So about one person in 300, one third of a percent of Americans have the virus. There's still an awful lot of potential for spread of these things. So this is the thing that I'm most going to be addressing today is can you catch the virus more than once? And is that a problem? Well, okay. So uh, if we scroll over to Europe, uh, we find that in most places in Europe, it really has started to sort of bend over somewhat, if you'll excuse the expression. So Italy too is starting to look at them, you know, more bend overy. UK is still uh, by far the worst in Europe. Uh, France keeps changing their counting methods. Uh, Germany looks pretty decent. Um, and Russia, eh, eh, still going up pretty, pretty, pretty quick. And someone asked about Portugal. Not about Portugal. Well, yeah, Portugal looks like it's sort of, you know, very comparable with Spain. Okay, right. So, uh, the uh, the question, can you get the virus more than once? <clears throat> and it all boils very much down to your immune system. There is basically no treatment for a virus. The you know, all a virus does is it gets inside your cell, puts a bit of RNA there. That RNA has all the instructions to make more viruses, and it keeps going boom, 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 like that until your immune system, which is a lot of experience at fighting viruses, sort of recognizes it and gets on top of it. Now, you'll notice that viruses have all these proteins on the surface. They're not all this regular. Some of them are, some of them are not. Uh, but these proteins on the surface... Uh, what a virus particle needs to get inside your cell. Turns out that cell membranes are actually fairly tough to get through if you're a virus. So they actually need these things on the surface, which is where antibodies come in. So what antibodies are is your body, through all of its experience in you know, for, for four and a half billion years of having experience of dealing with viruses, it can recognize these sort of foreign proteins on the surface and it starts producing antibodies that stick to them. And those antibodies do two things. First of all, they sort of stop it, they inhibit it from getting into a cell, which greatly reduces the spread of the virus. And secondly, they mark it for death. Likewise, you know, when you get an infected cell, it starts getting a load of these things on the surface because that's how new cap viral capsids break out. So once the antibodies stick to it, you've got other cells that come through and gobble it all up. And yeah, all of this was bought by an awful lot of evolution. So neither of these systems are smart in any true sense of the word. You know, the virus... Uh, Every now and again, it randomly mutates, and every now and again, it randomly mutates, and it spreads absolutely everywhere in the world. And then uh, organisms, uh, if you're not naturally sort of resilient to it, a lot of them die, and the ones that are more naturally resilient to it are the ones that survive. And, yeah, this is the arms race between your immune system and the viruses. Now, if you we if your immune system has had a lot of experience with viruses, uh, like the measles virus, say for instance, uh, you, some of these viruses your body tends to remember for a long time. So one encounter between your immune system and say the measles virus, and your body always keeps some of these anti-measles antibodies around. And if they start to detect things that it's sticking to, you start producing more and more of them. Uh, and, you know, so it shuts down a new measles infection before it really even starts to get going. 
The problem comes is when your body comes across a virus that it's never really come across before. It takes it quite a time to actually start producing these antibodies. And if you don't produce enough of them soon enough, then the virus spreads throughout all of the cells in your body. And of course, it kills them as it goes. And the necrosis, all the dead cells, basically overwhelm your metabolism. And that kind of kills you. Uh, and those people, you know, their their genes are sort of gone gone from the wide world. Um, however, if your body does start producing the antibodies, and your uh, it can also overshoot. By the way, yeah, you know, there's a lot of feedback mechanisms in the immune system that your immune. You, one of the reasons that you you kind of get these symptoms of being sick is. Because your body is devoting this huge amount of effort to making antibodies. Um, so, uh, if your body does get on top of it, then boom, shut down. You are, for a short time, absolutely, completely immune to the virus. And uh, if you go to the most infected place in the world and you breathe in the most viruses there are around... They instantly get coated with all the antibodies that your your immune system is producing, and they get gobbled up by your immune system, uh, which is fantastic. But the thing is that you don't keep antibodies around for all viruses, so your body is kind of forgetful, which is sort of you know, there's a there's a certain logic to it that uh, evolutionarily, if you remembered every disease, every virus that you ever came across <clears throat> and produced antibodies for all of them, then that that constitutes a fairly significant uh, overhead on your metabolism. So your body does tend to forget an awful lot of viruses. And if your body forgets the virus, of course, then you're susceptible to reinfection. Now, it's always likely that, you know, there'll be some memory of this in your body. So it's likely that your body will be better the second time around. But, <clears throat> uh, you know, the, the evidence at the moment is with the coronavirus, it's kind of like the, the influenza that your body just kind of forgets about it after you know, a few months, that sort of thing, which is bad news because a lot of the reason uh, why epidemics or pandemics run out of steam is once you've infected sort of 60% of the population, the wild spread rate of the virus goes down by 60%, which basically means that the virus becomes self-limiting. Uh, however, if those 60% <clears throat> at a later point can get reinfected with the virus, <clears throat> then you're fresh to go again, uh, which royally sucks. Because um, that means that even if you get a vaccine, all a vaccine is, by the way, typically, uh, you inject... Uh, I mean, a lot of the viruses, you, you just need fragments of the virus, and your body sort of recognizes it as foreign and starts producing the antibodies for it. But, um, yeah, so you might basically need continual uh, uh, vaccines for this sort of thing, which is not that different to how it works out with the flu. Uh, but uh, so it, it's not clear whether evolutionarily we've just not had a lot of experience with the virus or we've had lots of experience with the virus and your body has worked out the most successful strategy is you don't endure the overhead of constantly producing the antibodies for it because uh, evolutionary, evolutionarily, that's just the more successful strategy. Okay, so before I call it quits today, I want to take a quick look at how the data for America is doing. So, uh, if you take a look at the daily cases in America, uh, there were 30,000-ish new cases per day. And, yeah, where the line ran out is where I got a load of criticism for just drawing a straight line through this. 
Yeah, I've got quite a lot of experience in sort of best guess at this sort of thing. And even though I've got no idea about any of this data, yeah, I'm pretty good at drawing lines through things. Anyway, so now we have another 10 days worth of data and prediction doesn't look so bad. So for the number of new cases of the virus per day to get down to uh, whatever the state of emergency line, you're still looking at yeah, two months, that sort of thing. Uh, and if you, this is now, I'm keeping this one up. Uh, so blue line is my prediction for where total deaths in America is going to go. It's largely based on on the purple data as the Amer current American data, and I'm I'm assuming it's going to do something very similar to Italy, which is not just all bluster. If you take a look at the spread rate per day, and you know days since 500 cases, the blue line is America, purple line is Italy. So I mean, I think there's a reasonable case that it's going to sort of pretty much follow the Italy data anyway. So what do we get out of this? Currently, America is at about 60,000 dead-ish, and in all likelihood, yeah, just over 100,000 is probably the, the the final number that you're looking at. But before I, I sign off, that's on the basis that, you know, so far this is all social distancing, social distancing, social distancing, no one's tried to reopen the country yet. Right? And this is where the real problem comes is there are a lot of idiots in America. Um, uh, yeah. <sighs> People who really just don't get the, um, the, the nature of virality anyway. Uh, so someone sent me today... Uh, this, which is just awesome on every level. We did all this social distancing and there wasn't a flood of cases. Yeah, that means it's working. And this is, um, there were, were some people in California, I think Elon Musk's one of them actually, that says, you know, well, why are we making such a making it such big deal out of this? Um, you know, we didn't get that many cases. To which the answer is, yeah, if you get on top of it early, you don't get many cases. Otherwise, you end up like New York City. Uh, so it may well be that because... And it is true. The outcome that you expect, um, if there wasn't a virus, and if social distancing works, are exactly the same. Uh, if you didn't know, say for sake of argument, that the United States got exposed to the same virus and went boom like this, and South Korea got exposed to the same virus and took all of their social distancing seriously, and they ended up like this, right? We know there's a virus out there. We know you've got to take it seriously. Um, to pretend this data doesn't exist and that therefore now is a good time to reclaim your freedom well and, and that's the one that worries me is you don't need a large section of your population to behave like this and you basically can't contain the virus which kind of sucks anyway so with that i will wish you Good luck. Keep your hands clean. Um, and if you found it useful, drop a thumbs up on it. And see you next time. Thanks for watching.